Hey everyone, Andrea here with Great Expectations Realty. And today I'm going to be answering your questions from YouTube. Yes, you guys have so many questions. Um, and some of them are really great. Some of them I never thought I would be asked. Uh, but we're definitely going to go through the list today and um, just answer some of those for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, one of the biggest questions is crime in Ocala. That is such a hard question because, of course, you don't want to say, oh, well, this is a good area and this is a bad area because, of course, fair housing, um, you want to make sure that good or bad or whatever is um, not something that's based off of race or uh, gender or whatever. I don't know. I, I forget what it's the acronym, Fresh Corn. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we are going to do that. Um, the crime rate here in Ocala is a little bit high. Um, two of the factors is one, it's a huge, huge county. It is almost the size of Connecticut. So if you take our county versus let's say Connecticut and check the crime rates, I don't know, maybe it's better, maybe it's worse, I'm not really sure. Anyway, we also have I-75 going right through us. So a lot of the arrests that are made here in Marion County are not our people. <laughs> They are your people and they drive through here and we snag them. Well, not me personally, obviously, but um, so a lot of the rest you have to check and see where they're actually coming from. Um, so yeah, because just because they're coming through Ocala, that arrest means it was in Ocala and that means it goes on our crime stats. So when you have a major highway that goes all the way from Miami to Michigan, right through the center of your town, you're going to have a higher crime rate than other areas. For me personally, I have never ever felt unsafe here. I have loved grazing our kids here. I think it's a fantastic place. I can't even imagine walking down the street and somebody like trying to snatch my purse or something like that. It just wouldn't happen. I'd snap a, snap a picture of them and put it up on Facebook. Their mom would have something to say. It just, that kind of stuff doesn't happen. Um, it's still a fairly small town, so stuff that happens is, you know, you know who it was normally. Um, actually, our sheriff, Billy Woods, will actually put the people up on um, his Facebook or YouTube or whatever and actually say, you know, do you guys know where this person is? And generally speaking, they're like, oh, yeah, 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 so I'm over at Burger King. You know, it's just, it's a fairly small town, so... Um, while it is very spread out, large area, um, I think, you know, they're doing a pretty good job of catching the bad guys. So, yeah, not so much. Um, no houses to rent. Oscar Derrick recently posted that he had a great work opportunity in here in Ocala. He came down, drove around, but had to turn the job down due to no houses to rent. Oh, that's so horrible, but he's absolutely right. We're in a little bit of a housing crisis right now. We just don't really have that many houses. Um, I think that's getting rectified. Um, it was a little bit worse during, um, during the winter uh, because everybody was just so, you know, with quarantine and COVID and everything. And then having the winter on top of it, people were like, you know what? I'm out of here. So a lot of people from big and small cities were moving down here to Ocala all at once. And we just, you know, even though we have the jobs, we just don't have the housing. That is being rectified. There are thousands of houses being built currently. And every day it's going to get a little bit better. So um, I think we've pretty much capped out as far as the sales portion of it goes. I don't think it's going to get any higher um, at this point. Uh, so it is getting a little bit better. Um, and a lot of things have come up through um, investors. Investors are still purchasing even some of the new construction homes. They're still purchasing those. So they're building, they're buying, they're doing all of this. Um, the investors are, you know, thrilled with this as far as, you know, the rentals and everything. Um, but we are actually starting to see some more rentals hit the market. Um, generally speaking, investors love to get like foreclosures and stuff like that and fix them up and, you know, do what they call buy and holds. Um, but we haven't had any foreclosures. It's been illegal to do a foreclosure. So yeah, it's been a little bit interesting. A lot of the people that were renting, you know, they saw the housing go up so much that they went ahead and started selling the houses. Well, then you basically have two problems. You've got the landlord that's no longer renting and now you've got tenants that, had to move out because the buyers were moving into their new home. So it was just kind of this huge, big old mess, but it does seem like in the last few weeks it's starting to turn a corner. I know um, 
personally, we are bringing in quite a few more properties into property management, so that's definitely helpful. Um, we are working with several investors right now to get some more in because we have a waiting list. So yeah, it is true. We do not have that many rentals, but that is something that I've been telling you guys about for a year now. So not a big shocker. Um, how bad are snakes in Ocala? Um, someone asked how bad are snakes in Ocala, especially on the horse farms? Um, yeah, we have snakes. I mean, it's farms. Um, it's rural. So yeah, we do have snakes. Um, like poisonous snakes. Do I have like some kind of fear of that? No, <laughs> not at all. Um, there are some poisonous snakes, but there's also some snakes that are great. They're non-venomous and they actually eat the poisonous snakes. So some snakes are actually really great to have around your house. Um, especially like the black snakes. They look scary as all get out, but they're actually completely harmless and they eat the venomous snakes. So it's actually really great to have those around. Um, but everybody just absolutely hates snakes. So, um, it's actually pretty rare that you see a snake. Um, I've definitely been in a lot of rural areas, so I've definitely seen them. I would generally say, leave them alone. I'm pretty much like that with all the wildlife, like just leave the wildlife alone. Um, leave the animals alone. They're happy outside doing their thing. They don't come in the house. Just leave them out there. Um, generally snakes are not going to be in, you know, grass in your yard or something. Generally they're going to be in like bushes and brush and stuff like that. They want to hide. Um, so you're not going to really see them like that. So as long as you don't have like tall grass and brush, you know, all around your house, you know, mow your yard, you'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, someone asked, are there good hospitals in Ocala? The answer is yes, we have amazing hospitals here. We've got Advent Health, which seems to be popping up buildings like all over the place, like every corner of everywhere has an Advent Health. Um, we also have West Marion Community Hospital. We have Ocala Regional Medical Center. Um, we have only about a 30 minute drive to Shands. And um, it's actually, uh, that's up in Gainesville. Um, so UF Shands is a teaching hospital. It's absolutely amazing, amazing, like world renowned. Um, and then we also have a VA hospital up there uh, as well. And then we're getting a VA clinic. It says it's a clinic, but it's huge. Uh, that's coming in here in Ocala. We have another clinic down in the villages. We have uh, some hospitals down in the villages as well. So basically, you know, throw a rock in any direction, you're going to hit a hospital and they're really good hospitals. Um, I used to live in Citrus County and I would actually come to Marion County for a hospital. So yeah, just saying, um, you know, they're, like I said, really, really good hospitals up here. Uh, how is the humidity in Ocala? Well, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't hot. Um, <laughs> it's hot. Um, but it's not going to kill you. Like I grew up in Texas, like for 13 years I was in Texas and that was devastating heat. It was crazy. There were things called, um, ozone days where if you had bronchitis or any kind of, um, asthma or anything like that, you shouldn't go outside. We don't have anything like that over here. Uh, we have, uh, humidity like crazy. So you're your skin is going to feel so nice and soft and smooth. You're barely going to have to use moisturizer at all. Um, it's just, you know, we basically live in a sauna all the time. <laughs> so at least, you know, for a couple months out of the year. Uh, but you know, really, if you're up north, you're going to have cold months up there anyway, because you have, you know, like four or five months out of the year where it's snowing and freezing and frigid and all of that. Um, and it's really, you know, uncomfortable to go outside. It's essentially the same thing here. Um, it's about two to three months out of the year. It's uncomfortable to be outside. Yes, you can go out there. Yes, you can do things, but it's uncomfortable. It's sticky, sweaty. It's just gross. Um, so we don't, <laughs> we really kind of stick to the air conditioning. Uh, we don't really like do Disney or even the beach is kind of uncomfortable. It's just a little too hot for me. Um, you can, you can go swimming, you can go do whatever, but generally in like, especially between noon and 4 PM, it's just too hot to really be enjoyable. So we just don't, we go to the air conditioned activities, which we have a lot of, we have like sky zone, we have the movies, we've got the mall, we've got, there's just so much stuff to do that's indoors, um, or go to the shade. I mean, you know, you could go down the, 
the uh, Rainbow River in Denellen. You can go over to Silver Springs. There's a lot of water activities, um, and swimming is a year-round activity here because our our um, our winters are very very mild. We do actually get a freeze. Um, sinkholes. Should you be concerned? Well, yeah, I guess. Um, it's something to be aware of, but it shouldn't be your main concern when you're moving to Ocala. Um, sinkholes, a lot of it was kind of, I feel blown out of proportion. Yes, I mean, definitely there are some catastrophic sinkholes, you know, that have happened. Um, but it really it got kind of blown out of proportion um, during the recession. A lot of people were using it as an excuse and were getting out of their houses, even if there were just, you know, small cracks or small whatever, they were able to get their houses insured, basically take the insurance payout on the house um, if they claimed that it had a sinkhole, even if the sinkhole was not really that big a deal. Uh, so a lot of people claimed that there was sinkhole damage on their house and the insurance paid out um, to completely, you know, move from the house. Uh, and, uh, what's funny is, you know, you could have bought the house or sold the house for like 50 or $60,000 and they were getting, you know, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to move basically and purchase another house, which you could have gotten like the Taj Mahal back then at that price. So, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the issues that seem to have popped up that were sinkhole issues uh, were not really issues. I don't really want to say that a lot of people committed fraud because there were settlement cracks and stuff like that, but was it catastrophic enough for you to move out of the house? No, probably not. So that being said, uh, the insurance company has caught on pretty quick and they have now changed the rules that unless you pay more um, for sinkhole uh, insurance, they're basically only going to cover catastrophic damage. Like, you know, it eats the house. Um, and that is extremely rare. So yeah, normally, you know, it might be like roadways and stuff. You'll see, um, sinkholes open up and it's especially where cars are parked because that's a lot of weight. <laughs> that's a lot of weight. So, you know, you'll see that more so. So yes, sinkholes are a thing. It is something to be aware of. It's definitely something you want to look into in your insurance when you're selecting an insurance company, but it is not something to fear and, you know, lose sleep over. Are there good hotels in Ocala? Yes, there's a ton of great hotels in Ocala. I actually did a video on one of my favorite hotels and some other options for you. Um, one thing I would say is people come and there's like, you know, a hundred hotels over at um, two, Highway 200 and I-75 and they don't stay at any of those. They stay like further up the road going into like more rural areas and those are basically truck stops. And then they're like, is this Ocala? Well, technically yes, but not really. That's a truck stop. You're staying at a cheap hotel at a truck stop. Don't do that. Um, I would suggest any of the hotels, um, pretty much any of the hotels um, along 200 and I-75, also over at 484 and I-75, those are great. Um, I don't think I would stay at Wildwood. That is literally a city renowned, world renowned for its truck stop. Um, and I really wouldn't go, you know, further north either. Cause again, truck stops, do you really want to stay there? Um, and again, you're going to get what you pay for. If you're like, Oh wow, I found this really great deal on a hotel and it's only $50 a night. Okay. Have fun with the bed bugs. I mean, come on, seriously, you know, pay a decent amount, a, an average rate and you're going to have, you know, a, a better stay. So I would say around a hundred dollars a night would be a reasonable amount to pay here in Ocala. Um, for a reasonable, reasonably good experience, clean, bug-free experience in a hotel. Yes, you can save 10 or $20 a night by going for something less expensive, but is it really going to be worth it? Do you need to pay a couple hundred dollars a night for a good experience in a hotel? No, you don't need to do that either. There are definitely hotels that will charge that and they're excellent hotels and I'm sure you'll have a great time, but it's not necessary. I would say around $100 should get you just fine. Um, the gardening, um, is there gardening in Ocala? Yes, of course. You can have a garden here. I have a garden. It's like kind of growing like Jumanji right now. Um, our gardening timeframes are a little bit different because we're not, 
oh, we're not tropical, but we're not not tropical. Does that make sense? Probably not. Um, okay, so tropical is, you know, basically like Tampa, pretty much anything south of us where you can grow bananas and you can grow coconut palms and you could, you know, it's tropics, it's tropical, it's warm all year round. The reason that they're able to grow that stuff is they don't have a freeze. It'll never freeze down there. It just, it's too close to the equator. It's not going to freeze. Um, it's going to be hotter too, <laughs> but it's not going to freeze. Um, there are some plants, trees, etc., that cannot handle a hard freeze. We get a hard freeze here, um, which is why like orange trees, grapefruit trees, uh, lemon trees, lime trees, anything like that, they actually do really well because they can handle a freeze. Um, so, you know, it's great for that. Uh, you can grow pineapples here. And the way we manage that is we just go ahead and plant them in a planter and then bring them in the house if it does look like it's going to freeze and you should be good. I always forget to do so. So I've never actually gotten a pineapple out of my pineapple plants. I just have pineapple plants and then they kind of half die and come back and half die and come back. One of these days I'm actually going to get a pineapple out of my pineapple plants. But that's only if I remember to like cover them or bring them in on a freeze warning. Literally, it's all over the news. Like when a freeze warning ha happens, we're like, oh, I gotta like cover the plants. And you know, so everybody, all of a sudden you'll like drive by houses and there's like sheets and blankets and stuff over top of some of the bushes and plants. That's why you're protecting them from the hard freeze, you know? So basically it went down to like 29 degrees or something. That's enough for a freeze and it's enough to kill the plants that you so lovingly take care of all year round. Um, some plants that grow really, really well here are blueberries, strawberries, um, basically all the berries, uh, blueberries, strawberries. We actually have a strawberry festival like crazy down in Plant City that's huge because it's a lot of the strawberries that come throughout the United States are from there. They love the sand and all of that. Um, raspberries can also, and blackberries grow wild here. You will also have, um, I don't know, there's just so much food that actually grows here. It's kind of crazy corn not so much i think it's too humid i'm not sure anyway corn doesn't really grow that great watermelons grow fantastic here though uh, they just really love the sand and everything the growing times of year we normally have two growing times a year um we have spring and we have fall so my garden is like jumanji out there right now because that's my spring harvest um during the summer it's a little bit too hot and too much sun um, so it kind of kills everything off unless you put up a sunshade and that is actually what we do so that we can actually grow things for about nine months out of the year i've got a garden going which is pretty cool um but then in the fall if it you can go ahead and start the entire garden over again and you'll have um, fruits and vegetables in the fall too. So you actually, there's not a lot of need for like canning tomatoes and stuff like that because you can pretty much grow them almost year round. Um, so there's not really a reason to can them <laughs> unless you want to. If you, you know, really feel the desire, go for it. Uh, let's see what else grows. Um, I've got lettuce growing, herbs. I've got spinach growing like crazy. Um, my onions have pretty much taken over. I don't know. They're, they're growing like leaps and bounds, like scary. I keep giving them to the neighbors. They're like, you know, big, huge green onion. Thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, peppers and all of that, that grows. Um, we do have a little bit of a hard time with roses. So if you're a huge rose fan, you're going to struggle. It's not impossible. It's just very, very difficult to grow roses here. They don't like the heat, um, and they don't like the soil. So you're gonna have to basically have a raised garden bed for them. You're gonna have to constantly be tending them. Um, we've got like the knockdown roses, but that's about it. Um, I would say go ahead and get really in love with like hibiscus and some of the other flowers because those grow super, super easy down here. It's actually hard, kind of hard to kill them. Um, so just if you're a huge rose fan, it's gonna be difficult for you. Um, not impossible, but difficult, so. Um, okay, so last one on the list is, um, oh no, excuse me, there's two more. One is bugs. Do we have bugs here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have mosquitoes, we have cockroaches, we have all sorts of stuff. Um, the rule at my house is as long as you live outside, you're fine. You enter my home in any way, shape, or form, you're going to die. 
So uh, we have, um, I highly recommend Tyndale Pest Control. They're fun, fantastic. They've been taking care of us for years. Um, I don't have it like, you know, automatically come and spray poison in my house. <laughs> it's more if I see a bug, I'm like, okay, obviously there's an issue here. Um, and just go ahead and call them up and tell them exactly what I saw and they come out and spray and, you know, but there's different poisons for different bugs. So it's just easier for them to just, you know, come out and spray for just that thing. Um, we also have fire ants. Generally speaking, if you see ants, they're probably fire ants and yeah, it's going to hurt. So, uh, stay away from them. <laughs> uh, again, Tyndale Pest Control, absolutely great. They come in and like stick this thing down into the ant mound and, the ants kind of, you know, go off elsewhere if they didn't die. So, um, my husband is allergic to them. It does not bode well if he gets bit up. It's really nasty. So, um, we try and keep them out of the yard as much as possible, but oftentimes it's a lot easier said than done. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's a struggle with the ants. They don't get to stay um because they tend to come in the house as well. And then we've got a problem. So yes, bugs are, are a thing. Generally speaking, as long as you keep the smaller bugs out of your house, you won't have the bigger bugs like, you know, spiders and scorpions. And yes, I'm sorry, we have those too. Um, it's not like the big, black, creepy, scary looking ones. They're like little tiny, like tan colored ones. Actually, one fell on my head one time and it's like the same color as my hair. So I had a hard time with it. But um, I've actually never had a scorpion sting me. Never, even the one that fell on my head. I just kind of, you know, tossed it off, freaked out for about 10 minutes and I was fine. Uh, but gen I have, like, my husband's been stung by one. My sister has been stung by one. Um, that's not pleasant, but you won't die. They, we don't have poison scorpions or anything like that. It's just kind of, ugh, they're creepy looking. Um, but those are the same as spiders. They are hunting type things. So as long as you don't have, like, roaches or... Uh, ants or anything like that inside your house, you're not going to have those either because you're taking away their food source. So great thing to keep in mind. Keep all the bugs out of your house and you won't have any more bigger, scarier bugs in your house. Does that make sense? Um, as far as outside, yeah, we've got mosquitoes and we've got love bugs. Not as much as we used to have, but we still have them. Um, and apparently love bugs supposedly eat the mosquitoes. I don't know. Um, but even the mosquitoes seem to be down a little bit. Um, there's a lot of natural things that you can do to keep the mosquitoes down. Um, main thing I would say is again, don't keep brush and um, shady wet areas around your house and you should be okay. That's where the mosquitoes go. If you go out in like direct sun, you're not really gonna have mosquitoes biting you. You have to go into like, you know, under trees and brush and in the shade and that's where the mosquitoes are gonna be. So basically just be careful where you're going and if you're, going to go into a very mosquito infested area, you know, put some, um, off on or some, uh, I don't know. There's like 50 bazillion different products out there that will keep mosquitoes away from you. Um, but we do not have like a lot of the diseases that, uh, mosquitoes carry in other areas like malaria and dengue fever and stuff like that. We don't really have that here at all. So, um, they're just annoying. <laughs> um, okay. Last question is about the alligators. I don't know why everybody's so worried about the alligators. We don't really have those here in Ocala. I mean, yes, we have them. It's not really a worry for me. <laughs> like, I don't stay up at night going, I wonder if there's an alligator trying to get in. No, we don't have that much um, water here in Ocala. We're pretty high and dry here. Uh, so unless you go out to like the forest or something where there's like a lot of springs and swampy areas and clay, um, you're really not going to see them, you know, unless you live like with water in your backyard, like a canal or a swamp or a river or something like that, you're not going to have them going into your house. When you see the alligator things on YouTube, it's generally down in more South Florida, uh, where they've got, you know, like the Everglades. Yeah, that's full of, and that's alligator alley down there. Of course there's alligators, but up here, not so much. So, um, we do have other forms of wildlife like crazy alligators. I've seen a literally a few times in my entire life. And, um, generally speaking, they were in like other areas away from, um, people. Uh, so it's not like, you know, but I mean, like if I were to go swimming in alligator infested waters, I really wouldn't bother me either. They normally feed at night and not something big like me. So, 
yeah, they really, they're rather lazy. During the day, they have to stay in the sun in order to digest their food. So they're basically just going to be napping anyway. Um, and generally speaking, if they're, you're about the same size or bigger than the alligator, they're going to be more scared of you than you are of them. So let's just kill off the whole alligator attacking thing and trying to crawl into your house. And so I don't know what in the world of all of that is. That's more of a South Florida thing. That's let, let the alligators be their problem. <laughs> We don't really have those issues. Um, I did look it up and in all of Marion County ever, there has only been one alligator attack where somebody died and it was like 10, 15 years ago, something like that. And she was actually in the river with the alligator and it was like a 14 foot alligator and it was just this bizarre once in a lifetime kind of thing. So it's it's just really, really, really rare. You have much more likely um, getting struck by lightning, much more likely than alligators, truthfully. And if you wanna talk about hurricanes, yes, we have them, um, but we are basically where everyone evacuates to. So we're like center of the state and north. So we just really don't get affected by the hurricanes either that much. So unless you have like a whole bunch of trees, big massive trees right by your house, that would be a little scary. I generally like to keep trees away from my house because your house isn't like, you know, have major issues from the hurricanes, but the trees, they may fall on your house and that would be an issue from the hurricanes. So generally speaking, I like to keep the big, huge trees away from the house. So even if they, you lose a limb or something, you don't lose a roof. So, all right, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye for now. And oh, Bridget, she can't seem to not make noise while I'm doing a video, but we love her anyway. Y'all have a great night. Okay. Bye.